How do we know who we are? Apart from the things we have, the things we do, the people we know, all of those things can be taken away from us. And many times they are in the course of life with all of its ups and downs. We can't let our sense of identity depend upon things that can be taken away. Otherwise, we're building on sand. We aren't born with a clear sense of who we are. It's something that we need to receive as human beings. We need to hear it. So the question becomes, to whose voice do we listen? There are many competing and often conflicting voices in our lives that try to tell us different things about who we are. Some of those voices are quite contrary to the voice of God. But thankfully, thanks be to God, there is another voice above and beyond all of these conflicting voices, there is the voice of truth, and he speaks to us in the gospel. It's the voice of our good shepherd, the voice of Jesus. We know he speaks the truth because he is the truth. He is the very word of the Father. He is the perfect image of the invisible God. He says to us, the Father and I are one. He can neither deceive nor be deceived. Every word he speaks is the truth. And what he tells us is that we are his sheep. We belong to him. He has taken us on personally as his responsibility. He has made it his mission to bring us into eternal life, to bring us home to the Father's house. We belong to him. That's our deepest and truest identity. Quite apart from what we have or what we do, we belong to him. And he says, No one can take them out of my hand. These are some of the most consoling words in all of Scripture. Because of who he is, because he is the eternal Son of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, nothing can stand in his way. If he desires to bring us into eternal life. There is no created power that can withstand his power. He has defeated sin. He has defeated death. He has defeated hell. No one can stand against him. No one can contradict him. No one can take us out of his hand. And he says, I give them eternal life. Not only at some future time, not only at the end of our lives, but now he gives us eternal life. He can do this because he is risen. He enjoys the fullness of life with the Father. He has been glorified. He is the living one. He has passed beyond death. He stands on the far shore and says, I hold the keys of death and of Hades. He can give eternal life now. Eternal life is not just a life that goes on and on, but it's the fullness, the plenitude of life, the abundance of life, drinking life at its very source, drinking life from the author of life, from God himself. Jesus can give us that life here and now, and he does give us that life here and now when we approach him with sincerity in his sacraments. 
He comes to wash us with his precious blood that he shed for us. He comes to make our robes clean. He, he comes to make us acceptable in the sight of his Father. He comes to remove from us anything that stands in the way of our eternal happiness. This he will do for us because we are his sheep, not because we've done anything to impress him, not because we have a whole long list of credentials or achievements to present to him, but simply because he loves us and he's made us his own. That's it. Our part is to receive this unfathomable gift. Our part is to say yes to being his sheep. As a sheep, I know that apart from the shepherd, I'm in trouble. My salvation, my life depends upon being in the hands of the shepherd. So my role is to be a good sheep, to yield, to surrender to the shepherd, not to be a squirmy sheep that's always trying to get away, not being a stubborn sheep that keeps doing the opposite of what the shepherd says, not resenting the shepherd's rod and staff that try to steer me away from the ravine and from the wolves, but yielding to the shepherd's rod and his staff, knowing that these two are forms of care for me, just as when he caresses me. A little tap on the rump is not going to do me any harm. It's going to get me going where I need to go. And so let's give that to him. Let's give him that full yes and that full surrender that he so desires as our shepherd. He desires only good for us, only life. He said, I've come that they may have life and may have it abundantly. But to receive it, we have to say yes to it and we have to surrender to him, to the shepherd, to the only one who can give us this life. So we give him that full yes and that full surrender today. As we approach him in his sacrament, we become more and more the ones that he has created us to be. We come more and more fully into our identity as beloved sons and daughters of the Father each time that we say yes to our good and loving shepherd.